Hey guys, it's Jack here from My Collect Apple, and today, as promised, I am unboxing Apple's AirPods. So these are the wireless earbuds that were announced alongside the iPhone 7 back in September. Originally meant to come out at the end of October. They delayed them a bit for various reasons, reasons which are unclear. But uh, yep, they finally went on sale for pre-order on the 13th. So I got my order in, so they came today. Today is the 19th. Currently, a waiting time of six weeks in most countries. Apple stores are apparently stocking them, so if you need them before Christmas, for example, your best bet is to go into an actual store. So I'm going to cut these open, and while doing so, I shall talk about them a little bit. So, yeah, unfortunately it's not, the uh, external packaging isn't as easy to get into as a iPhone one. It's literally done up with tape, whereas the iPhone ones are all nice and you can sort of pull a tab. But unfortunately, these require a bit more manual labor. Cool. So inside the first box, that's one down. Now we go do the second one. So here they are. Quite a nice box. In fact, I will cut this out or rip it. Stab. So I brought the camera in a little bit because it's quite a small box compared to usual. It's nice packaging, so you get an actual box unlike uh, the old earpods where you had the sort of clear packaging, although the lightning connector earpods are in a sort of similar box, just a lot smaller obviously. So yeah, it's a bit more premium. The uh, actual headphones on the front are uh, sort of like old iPhone packaging, there is actually sort of 3D texture to them, you can feel them. Uh, on the bottom we have all our product information. And on the back, we have a picture of them in the case. So it says the name of the product, which is AirPods with charging case, down the bottom there. And obviously we have a picture of the lightning cable charging the case, just in case anyone was unclear as to how you use them. So unfortunately, there's no pull tab to this packaging, so we're gonna have to cut it open again. It's a shame, I would have liked to see the new pull tab on all of the products, even the accessories, but at the moment, it seems to just be iPhones and iPads, so we'll have to cut it open like so. And then tear. So, here are the AirPods. Let's get them open. Big reveal. Oh no, covered by more packaging. Right, so, we got a little booklet like we do with iPhones and under here, there they are in their little case. All right, so I'll put this packaging over here. Let's take them out. Ooh, very nice. I'll just put them over here as well. Anything else? Oh, of course, the lightning cable. So just put that back in there. Nothing else in there. So a lightning cable, pretty standard, as you come to expect. We also have a little booklet, well, a pouch, designed by Apple in California, of course. So what do we have inside? So this is very similar to the watch. We have a couple of product guides, no Apple stickers, oh. oh well. And yeah, so it's basically telling you it requires an, a phone plus iOS 10 for this method. It doesn't need to be an iOS device, you can pair them with an Android device using the button on the back of the case, which I think it's showing you here. So uh, yep, that method listed there, it does say you need iOS 10. Also says the cloud sync feature, so when you pair them with one device on your iCloud account, Pairs with Malt, all of your devices signed in. It requires WatchOS 3, iOS 10, or Mac OS Sierra, or newer. So, what else do we have? Oh yes, of course, the AirPods themselves. So, it's just standard Apple packaging. Just unwrap it, like so. There you go. We have our nice glossy box. Looks like dental floss. Hinge on the back, and that's the pairing button for non-Apple devices. Obviously, on the bottom, we have a lightning port for charging. So this case, 
acts as an external charger. The AirPods themselves have about a uh, five hour battery life, whereas the case has an additional 24 hours. So if you're on the go, you can just put them back in the case, give them a boost. And uh, yeah, obviously these have the Apple W1 chip in them. So uh, we open them up and uh, there they are. And as you can see, we've got a little flashing light. I'm guessing that means they're searching for a phone. So I'm just gonna close it for a second. So if we take them out, just put them down. Obviously the case is designed to fit them and we have two contacts at the bottom in the holder, which charges them. Obviously you can take the case away. And the AirPods, well, they look very similar to AirPods. They are literally just AirPods without wires. Of course down the bottom we have our metal for the charging connector and the beam forming microphone so when these are in your ear even though they're quite far away from your mouth they can still pick up your audio coming out so obviously for calls talking to Siri that's what the microphones are for these resell for $159 and £159 and as I said before they do work with iOS devices obviously and Android devices that button on the back is how you pair them with Android devices so early reviews are saying uh, the sound quality is better than the earpods. Still nothing incredible. Unfortunately, you're paying the 159 here for an Apple product and plus the technology in them, such as the W1 chip. And uh, that's the same chip that's found in the new Beats headphones. So the Beats uh, Solo 3s, uh, Power Beats 3 and the Beats X. The Beats X, which are coming in February, I believe. So yes, Apple's designed the chip in there. So the W1. And uh, yeah, there was initial fears about them falling out your ear as you went, as you moved. But if the earpods didn't fall out for you, there's no reason why these should. Because having a wire, does, a wire that is actually pulling down does not actually keep headphones in your ears. And if anything, it's going to pull them out. So I don't know where those concerns were coming from. Yes, there were people that the, unfortunately, the earpods really just don't fit their ears. They're probably going to run into issues here as well. Of course, the big factor, though, is if they do fall out, especially out in public, yeah, you've got no way of really catching them. So I can see that being a big issue. That's sort of pushing me towards actually using my old wired earpods in public rather when I'm out on a train or something rather than having these in my ears. These I'm going to sort of use at home. And people are sort of saying they're getting in clear spaces up to 50 foot range with the Bluetooth. So at the end of the day, it still uses Bluetooth LE low energy so battery life's going to be good on the phone and the airpods and i read a review today that was from a marathon runner who went on a 10k run with them and had no problem with them falling out or the battery life so that's a plus i've also heard that they're a lot louder than the airpods which is incredible because the airpods were also very loud and the annoying thing was the earpods always were rubbish at keeping the noise in your ears so people around you could always hear your music. So if these are even louder and the design hasn't really changed, I'm going to su suspect that these are even worse. So everyone around you is going to hear your music. Okay, so now I'm going to pair the AirPods to my phone. Normally I record with my phone, but obviously I'm not right now because it's, well, there. So to record this part of the video, I'm using an iPhone 6S. So apologies for the change in quality. I've had to turn a lamp on to get the same amount of light to be picked up by the camera, which means we have a nice shadow over here. Apologies about that. Um, it really just shows how the wider aperture in the iPhone 7 camera, 7 Plus camera over the smaller 6S really makes a difference. So here we go. So from what I know, you open the lid while near your iPhone to make them pair. I don't know if the screen has to be awake or not, so I'm just gonna have a look. So open the lid. No. Okay, so the screen does have to be on. And there we go. So on the screen, it's saying unlock to connect. I was going to try and prop them up, but the lid will close. So. so it says connecting. And there we go. So it's already got my name, which is really cool. It's uh, obviously taken that from the iPhone and it did have the battery level there. Okay, so when you bring them near, it brings it up to the case of 74% out of the box and the AirPods have 68%. Also tells me which is, oh, now it's telling me which specific one has which amount of power. So it's telling me that the 
Left one has 79% and the right one has 69%. No idea why they're different, but hey ho. So if I go into control center, go to the music tab, I can select my AirPods as an audio device. So obviously it's got my Apple TV over AirPlay and obviously my iPhone speaker. And there I can select my AirPods. So it's connecting to them. It might not while the lid's closed. Let's have a look, so I open the lid. There you go, brings up that menu every time you open the lid, which is great. And there you go, it is connected now. Close them, lid goes, sorry, close them, the menu goes away. Open them, comes up. So as you can hear, it makes quite a loud clicking noise. That's because the lid is magnetic. Also, the AirPods are held in the case by a magnet. So when you pull them out, put them back in, it's magnetic like that. So yeah, really cool so far. I'm going to have a little look at them and see what I think. So after playing with them for just a little bit, so far, so good. Yep, sounds better than the AirPods. Still, as expected, no major sound improvements. I mean, vocals are a bit clearer. Um, yeah, it, they definitely sound crisper. But again, they're not high-end headphones. So this is sort of Apple's sort of fourth attempt at headphones release really, because you had the original iPod ones and you had the in-ear ones and you had the AirPods and now you have the AirPods and each time they have seemed to get better. Personally, I think the AirPods and the AirPods are super comfortable. I don't like in-ear buds. I'm not a big fan of full-on headphones. Obviously, that's where you get the best quality, but I'm just more sort of about comfort um, and I really find them comfortable. I know some people find them horrendous though. So for me and people like me, they are really nice to use. They're really nice, really nicely made. They're very solid. Uh, they feel more substantial than the AirPods, sorry, the AirPods. And the chrome bits around the bottom, yeah, really good. Uh, the case also is absolutely awesome. Uh, you have the charging light there, which changes color depending on the battery level. And like I showed you earlier, it's magnetic. And yep. It's on a hinge. The hinge is a bit creaky at times, which is a bit disappointing, but the magnet is very strong, keeps them nice and shut. Initial setup is amazing. That just flicking the lid open to pair on an iPhone, super easy. Also, when it's paired with my watch, it displays this screen and the battery indicator. So when I'm listening to music on my phone with the AirPods, it will show up in my watch battery life. And obviously over iCloud, if I started listening to something on my iMac or my iPad, it would pick up from there. Complaints so far, uh, a few bugs in software like that screen on my watch I showed you once I tried it and the battery indicator for one of them didn't have the green ring around it, it just said the number. Again, teething issues I guess. And also I'm still getting used to the double tap to activate Siri which you can change to uh, play pause but you could just pull one out to play and pause the music, it's really simple. Uh, yeah, I, a few times it didn't respond when I double tapped. I mean that may be me, not really practiced with it yet but to me it's all maybe a software issue who knows but I think it was more me uh yeah they charge really quickly out the case the battery went up as I was watching it so I believe it uses the same fast charging as the Apple Pencil does but don't hold that against me it might not but judging from the speed they were charging I think it does uh, obviously you get the lightning cable in the box so you can charge the case while the AirPods are in it. And yeah, as I mentioned briefly, at the moment the only gestures unfortunately are double tap to activate Siri. In settings this can be changed to play pause. Easier just to pull one out because with the accelerometers when you pull one out of your ear, it will play pause anyway. Sadly, no skip track, no change volume, all that's gotta be done on the phone or via Siri which is very annoying because I mean the microphone and remote on the standard AirPods is my life. Like I'm always skipping tracks with it or going back and changing volume. Changing volume, not so much. I quite often do that through my pocket uh, with the volume buttons on the phone, but skipping tracks, I'm going to miss that. So when you put the AirPods in your ears, it makes a chime to say they're active. It's sort of like a piano chime. It's very odd. It's not a sound Apple's used before. So that's quite cool, I guess. Um, just little things like that. But all of this, like the accelerometers, the beam forming microphones, they're all thanks to this W1 chip. And I'm sure obviously the next generation of AirPods will use the W2 chip. So who knows what's to come in the future. For a first attempt at wireless headphones, these are absolutely great. I mean, just the pairing alone, just open the lid. There you go, they're paired. It's amazing. Um, no hassle whatsoever. 
And again, an improvement is sound. Hopefully over time that will get better with new generations, but any improvement is welcome. So overall, I still think these are a little bit pricey at 159, uh, but I don't feel like I've just spent ridiculous amounts of money. Like the Design by Apple in California book, as much as I love it, it's crazy price. These, I feel like they're worth the money. Again, I think they could be lower, 159 pounds, especially when they retail for $159 as well, but I don't feel ripped off as such. Uh, I know I've only played with them a little bit, but I'm looking forward, really looking forward to trying them out properly. And uh, so far I would highly recommend them. Like everything about them feels premium, even the packaging. So yeah, really pleased with my purchase so far. Definitely recommend them if you can get hold of them at the moment. Um, so far, so good. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be back again soon. I will be doing an iPhone 3GS unboxing to add to my sort of retro unboxing uh, playlist. So as I said before, I will be unboxing every iPhone. So at the moment, I've done four of them. But I will be filling in the ones I haven't done. So yep, because there is a bit of a demand for those videos on my channel. Next new product unboxing, who knows? <laughs> it could be a new iPad. It could be the new MacBook Pro. We shall see whatever comes next. So once again, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you again soon. Bye for now.